Hello mga ka-Elian, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Sir DL and welcome to The Elian's Vlog and Math Tutorials. So today we will be having another tutorials and it's all about Quadratic Equations by Extracting the Roots. What are the objectives of this lesson? Number one, discuss quadratic equations. Number two, Solve quadratic equations using extracting the roots. And number three, find the values of x by extracting the roots. Before we proceed to the main lesson, always remember that some people succeed because they are destined, but most because they are determined. Again, some people succeed because they are destined, but most because they are determined. Let's proceed to the main discussion of this lesson. What is quadratic equation? A quadratic equation is a second-order polynomial equation in a single variable. A quadratic equation is a second-order or second-degree polynomial equation in a single variable. The standard form of, of a quadratic equation is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, where a should not be equal to zero. Again, the standard form of a quadratic equation is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to 0, where a should not be equal to 0. The graph of a quadratic equation is a parabola. Again, the graph of a quadratic equation is a parabola. Let's focus our discussion on quadratic equation by extracting the roots. There are also different ways on how to solve for the roots or how to find the values of x of a quadratic equation. There is by factoring, quadratic formula, completing the square. But for today, let's focus on extracting the roots. When do we use quadratic equation by extracting the roots? As we all know, we have the standard form for quadratic equation that is ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, where a should not be equal to zero. We will be using quadratic equation by extracting the roots when there is no value for b, when, when the value for b is zero. That means we only have ax squared plus c is equal to zero. Let's practice. Given x squared minus four is equal to zero, what is the first step? The first step is to transpose the constant on the other side of the equation. We will be transposing the constant from one side to the other side. Always remember when we are transposing one term from one side to the other side, the sign will be changed. The sign will be changed. So from negative, that will become positive. Or you can equate this one like adding positive 4 on both sides so that negative 4 plus 4 will be cancelled. Then we will be having plus 4 here, 0 plus 4, that will be 4. But I, cho I chose to use transpose the constant on the other side of the equation in order for you to understand it easily. We will be just trans transposing negative 4 on the other side. But when we transpose, make sure that the sign of the term that we are transposing will be changed. From negative, it will become positive. From positive, it will become negative. The next process, find the square root of both sides. Make sure there's no other constant except 1 on the side of x squared. Then find the square root of both sides. So we will be squaring, we will be doing the square root for both sides. So what is the square root of x? That is x. Square root of 4, that is positive and negative 2. Which means there, there are two values for quadratic equation, positive and negative 2. Let's try to check the values of our x a while ago on the given is positive and negative 2. Ways on how to check, substitute the value of x on the given equation, then simplify the equation. We will be substituting it by 2, so 2 times 2 is 4, minus 4, that is 0. If it is negative 2 times negative 2, it will, it will also be 4, minus 4, that is 0. That means our answer is correct. Equal. Next example, x squared minus 36 is equal to 0. The first step, we... Very good. We transpose the constant on the other side of the equation. But make sure when you transpose one term from one, one side to another, the sign will be changed. So from negative, it will become positive 36. The next step, 
find the square root of both sides. We will be finding the square root of both sides. So what is the square root of x? That is x. Square root of 36, positive and negative 6. That means the values of um, x on x squared minus 36 is equal to 0 are positive and negative 6. Let's try to have another example. x squared minus 50 is equal to 0. The first step, transpose the constant on the other side of the equation. So we will be transposing negative 50 on the other side. But always remember again that when we transpose one term to another from one side to another, the sign will be changed from negative 50, it will become positive. Next, find the square root of both sides. We will be finding the square root of both sides. As we all know, x squared is a perfect square, but 50 is not a perfect square. That's why we will be adding another process, and that is to find two factors and one factor should be perfect squared. Always remember that we need to find two factors and one factor should be perfect squared. If possible that we have two factors and one of the factors must be perfect squared. But if there's no, no other factor, that means you will be answering positive and negative 50. But 50 has two factors and one of the factors is a perfect square. So that means 25 multiplied by 2 is 50. 25 is a perfect square. So what's the answer? The answer is x is equal to 2 positive and negative 5 square root of 2. That is the final answer. That is the final answer. x is equal to positive and negative 5 square root of 2. Because 25, the, the square root of 25 is 5 and we will be staying or remaining in square root of 2. Another example. x squared minus 243 is equal to 0. First step, transpose the constant on the other side of the equation. So from negative 243, when you transpose it, the sign will be changed. That will become 243. Very good. Next, find the square root of both sides. x squared is a perfect square. 243 is not a perfect square. But I think we have two factors and one of the factors is perfect square. That's why find the factors of the constant and one factor should be perfect squared. So two factors, one of the factors should be perfect squared. As we can see, 81 multiplied by 3 is 243 and the square root of 81 is so the answer will be x is equal to positive and negative 9, the square root of 3. Always remember that you can try to have two factors and one of the factors must be perfect square. If there's no other factors except one itself and the other and the number itself, we can do something about it but to accept the answer. But for this, we have factors and, the factor, and one of the factors has a perfect square. That's why we tried to simplify it. Next example, 5x squared minus 200 is equal to 0. The first step, transpose the constant on the other side of the equation. So from negative 200 or minus 200, we will transpose it. That will become positive 200. Uh, other math teachers do not like to use transpose, but rather they try to add plus 200 and plus 200 on both sides so that negative 200 plus 200 will be cancelled. But in order for us to realize that there's shortcut, I use transpose. I use the word transpose from one side to the other so that it will be easier for the other, uh, for the other viewers, okay? So we have here a value for A. So our next step will be divide both sides by the value of A. Because one of the rules in terms of extracting the roots, make sure that there's no other value on the side of x squared in order for us to extract the roots of x easily. So we will be dividing both sides by the value of a, that is 5. So 5x five div five squared divided by 5 is equal to 200 divided by 5. The answer is x squared is equal to 40. Then find the roots, square root of both sides. Then find the factors of the constant and one factor should be perfect squared. So as we can see, we find the square root of both sides and we find the factors of the constant and one of the factors must be a perfect square. So the answer is, what is the square root of 4? Square root of x squared is x. Square root of 4 is positive negative 2 square root of 10. That is the final answer because there's no other 
Um, other factors, which is perfect square on 10. That's why the answer or the final answer is x is equal to positive negative 2 square root of 10. Another example, 3x squared plus 27 is equal to 0. So transpose the constant on the other side of the equation. So from positive 27 or plus 27, when we transpose it, we will be having negative 27. So divide both sides by the value of a because our main rule, there's no other value. There's no value for a except 1. So we will be dividing the values of both sides by 3. So 3x squared divided by 3 is 1x squared. Negative 27 divided by 3, that is negative 9. Next rule, find the square root of both sides. Find the factors of the constant and one factor should be perfect square if, one, if the constant is not a perfect square. So what we have here is like this. Positive 9 multiplied by negative 1. The square root of x squared is equal to the square root of 9 multiplied by negative 1. 9 times negative 1 is negative 9. So the answer is the square root of 9 is 3 and the square root of negative 1 is imaginary number or i. So the final answer with this equation is x is equal to plus minus 3i. Because always remember when we are square, finding the square root of a negative number, we will be having an imaginary number. That's why it is equal to positive negative 3i. Let's try to have another example. 6x squared plus 48 is equal to 0. The first step, transpose the constant on the other side of the equation. Or try to add negative 48 on both sides. So our answer for that part is negative 48. So we will be transposing 48 on the other side that will become negative 48. Then we have the value for a and we need to cancel 6. So we will be dividing both sides by the value of a that is 6. 6x squared divided by 6 is equal to negative 48 over 6. So that is x squared is equal to negative 8. 6x squared divided by 6 that is x squared. Negative 48 divided by 6 that is negative 8. Find the square root of both sides, find the factors of the constant and one factor should be perfect square. If the constant is not a perfect square, we need to find a factor. If there's no other factors, that is the answer. So we have factors for negative 8, which is 4 times negative 2, where 4 is a perfect square. So what's the answer? The square root of x squared, that is x, and the square root of 4 is 2. So positive negative 2, square root of negative 2 because negative 2 has no perfect square or it's not a perfect square. That's why our final answer is x is equal to positive negative 2, square root of negative 2. So we're finished with our lesson and I hope you learned something again for, from this lesson. We will be having another lessons in the future such as quadratic equation by factoring, quadratic equation by completing the square, and quadratic equation by using quadratic formula. Always remember, success demands three things. Sacrifice, hard work, and determination. I hope you learned something from our discussion about quadratic equation by extracting the roots. Okay, everyone, thank you for watching. Thank you for being with me. Thank you for subscribing. May the Lord bless you and God loves you. Always remember that. See you.